number 15. Today is September 6th, I think, and it's Friday, and I thought I would update you. So um, I'm back from the attic, went there for summer school. The attic is a needlework store in Arizona, and then we had to semi hunker down <laughs> because we thought we were going to get a hurricane. So um, I feel bad for the people that did get hit pretty hard, but we kind of dodged a bullet here in Jacksonville, which it's kind of easy to become a little complacent because the way the state of Florida is shaped and there's like kind of an inlet area on the coast where Jacksonville is, and sometimes hurricanes will hit that warm water and they'll immediately go north. So, unfortunately, Charleston and um, I think Virginia are going to get some of And North Carolina, South Carolina, they're all going to get a little bit of it. Hopefully, um, everybody can stay safe. It's like I think of various friends along the coast. <laughs> and you just pray for them that they're going to be safe through the hurricane. So... I have a lot to show. I kind of had thought I was going to do one right after um, I got back from Arizona. And <laughs> as always, I just kind of piddled around and didn't do it. I look a little <laughs> worse for the wear, I guess is the word. I didn't, I stayed up my normal. I went to bed about 1.30, stitching last, I was stitching and I went to bed about 1.30. Then I couldn't sleep, which is really unusual for me. Usually by going to bed that late, I fall right to sleep. But for some reason, I felt like I'd had 10 cups of coffee. I could not sleep. And so I tossed and turned a lot. And so this morning I got up about 7.30. And so I had a quilt customer come around 10. And then I thought, I'm going to go take a morning nap, you know. To me, that's, that's sort of like cheating. It's like, okay. Go back to bed in the morning is like beating the system or something. Anyway, so I'm back. And um, never mind all of this. <laughs> so I have five things I want to go through. And this, I am not going to say that this is going to be a short video because I think this is going to be a long video. But you can split it up and watch it in 25 segments. <laughs> Whatever is tolerable. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you, and these literally came the day before I left for Arizona. I left on a Wednesday, and I think they came Tuesday at like 5 o'clock when the UPS truck went by. But anyway, I have four things that I got framed at Total Framing, which is in Fairfax, Virginia. And... Um, I really like, they do a nice job. If you sign up for their emails, you can take advantage of their sales. And um, I do not frame with glass. I have a lot of people ask that over and over. I do not frame with glass. Never have. Don't know why. I just originally did not. And I started stitching a lot when we lived in Kansas City. And that was just kind of the trend. Nobody use glass. And in fact, I was told, you know, your needlework can't breathe if you have glass. So never have used glass. I think I have one piece that I have with glass that I've showed before. And that was actually because somebody else framed it for me because it, it was a store model for a while. I um, also don't hang needlework in the bathroom. And I really don't hang very much in the kitchen where there's going to, you know, there's going to be a lot of humidity. So for people that are worried about um, needle, you know, preserving their needlework, this one piece right here, I finished in 19, no, the one above it, 1988. You do the math. I think that's like 30 years, 31 years. So, and it's fine. It looks just the same as it did when I first had it framed. So anyway, Okay, so my framed pieces. So I think I'll start with the biggest and go to the smallest. So the first one is, this is Halloween at Holly Berry, Holly Berry Farm. Oops. 
This is by Stacy Nash. I used a linen called 18th Century Rook. And I kitted it quite a while ago. And I, then I finished it last year. In fact, I was stitching on it at the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat in um, Virginia last year. Let's see if I can get this better. It's the called for colors, the called for everything. And I've now done Christmas at Holly Berry. I just want to say Holly Brook, but I think it's Holly Berry Farm. Um, summer, which is the patriotic one with the bunting, and then Halloween. Now, this is a piece I won't necessarily have in, you know, prominence when it's not in the fall, but I'll still keep it hanging. Either I'll switch it out and put it in the hallway or in my sewing room or something. Because it's a big piece and I, I really want to enjoy it. I love the little witch in her cauldron. I think that's cute. Anyway, Stacy Nash. I didn't get the patterns out. When I actually finished them, I think I had showed you the patterns at one time. The next one, oh, and I was going to say with total framing, if you send them pieces, they, she, Terry, it's Sherry and Terry, and they will send you texts or emails, but text is fine with me, and they will send you suggestions. And so then you can pick whatever one they suggest that you like, or you can ask for more suggestions. This is Pink Owl Sampler, and this is by Plum Street. I'm not 100% sure if this is an original design or if this is a reproduction. I'm thinking this is an original design because I think she put her relative there. So I did that also. And this is something on other floss tubes that I've shown that when I was working on it, when I finished it. Um, Laura Fields Thompson is my grandfather's mother. So Fields was her maiden name. I don't know that she went by Laura Fields Thompson, but she was born in 1866. Let's see if I can show you a little closer. I love houses, not just for the aesthetic of loving a house on a um, sampler, but also because I like solid stitching. And I like alphabets. I like it all. Um, sometimes... And I'll show you a piece later that I'm working on that actually some of some things that have a lot of color changes can get a little bit tedious. But once they're done, you're like, oh, yeah, that was worth it. <laughs> this one. I'll show you this one first. This one is Esther Sire by Plum Street. And I think this is one of her what she calls Plum Street Antiques. So this is a reproduction. And this one kind of got on my nerves. <laughs> this little girl was annoying. Um, I guess because there was a lot of over one. The other thing, and I'm ashamed to admit it, but this border, the brown border that goes around here, not the, not the flowers, but the border. I did the entire thing in the wrong color <laughs> originally. And so I was like, oh, this isn't going to work. So I took it all out. I did it originally in this lighter brown. And it just, it looked awful. So when I took it out and replaced it, I had already put the pink in for these flowers. So I had to make sure I matched up even if I had a mistake, which I didn't, fortunately, but I had to match up to make sure I got the stems to match with the buds on the flowers. But I, now that it's finished, I love it. It's very soft. I, oh gosh, I don't remember what I did. I want to say this was, it was on the called for. I want to say this was an R&R, &R, maybe Old Town Blend. I don't know. I think I, I'm pretty sure I did it with silks, NPI silks. But it was fun because there were, um, this whole band right here is eyelets. 
this whole alphabet and this band. So from here to here, those are all eyelets. And there's some satin stitches up here. So there's just enough, you know, specialty stitches to make it fun. Although eyelets aren't my favorite. Um, we were talking about this at the attic at summer school. And Jean Lee, who's the owner of the attic, she gave us all permission to use Smyrna crosses instead of eyelets. We were all like thrilled. <laughs> Woo, I feel like I've been had permission from a high authority. Anyway, this last one is Eliza Mitchell. I am in love with this one. I am in love with it. This is by Lottie Da. And she got a little annoying. She was a little hard to handle <laughs> as a child. <laughs> but there was just a lot of intense stitching on this. Um, like this band, it's hard to see, but some of those petals are pink. So you have quite a few different colors just in that one band, just in this band going across. But I love this. I think this part right here would just be a beautiful small. So this is Eliza Mitchell by Lottie Da. And I remember telling you this. This is 40 count weeks, uh, Confederate gray. And this is the original weeks that was not on the Zweigart base. So 40 count to do a full crossover one is, for me, it's just a little bit hard. Um, but I did do her name here, age, name, year. I did that all in a full crossover one. And then I was like, Oh, this is not going to be fun if I have to do this entire verse over one with a full cross. So I didn't. I did it with a tenth stitch. You can still read it. It looks fine. It almost looks like I just used a different color down here because I was afraid it would look too different between the two over ones. But at that point, it's fine. I don't care. I like the verse, too, if I can read it like a poem should be read. If solid happiness we prize within our breasts, this jewel lies. And they are fools who roam the world, who roam. <laughs> the world has nothing to bestow. From our own selves our joys must flow. And that dear hut, our home. That dear hut is our selves. Never called myself a hut. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's my framed pieces, and I've been anxious to show you those. I don't have anything out for framing right now. I think I want to send um, Isabella Fox, which is by GGR, and I showed that on my last video as the big tree and the Adam and Eve and all of that. So <clears throat> I kind of got on a roll one day and decided to do some finishing. And I've had some things just languishing, just languishing. So I thought, okay, let's just take a sewing day because it does take a while to do finishing. And I'm not being critical. Some pattern designers write great finishing instructions and some leave a little to be desired. And it's the same with sewing patterns or quilt patterns. Sometimes it's just like you have to really think through, okay, what are they trying to tell me? And especially if they don't put a picture. I'm a visual learner. And if you give me a picture, you don't even have to give me text if you or dialogue. You, I can get it from a visual picture. But So anyway, it took me a while. But this was, um, and I know you've all seen this before. This is a blackbird design, and um, my sister and I, this was before the old mill stitchery closed in Liberty, Missouri. So we took a class with blackbird that was put on by um, the old mill stitchery. So when I originally got this, it was just this original pattern, hats off to Uncle Sam. 
And then we painted in the class. I think we painted this. We painted a lot of it. And then we added the ribbon. So we had all this as part of our kit for the class. And this is just like something you would, you know, like a frame or whatever from, or a plaque from Hobby Lobby that you would um, decoupage something on. And then this and then the ribbon. So I had done the stitching a while back, but I just hadn't finished it. This is done on murky. Some of my sawdust is, I still need to take some of it out. I do uh, fill with sawdust. Sawdust just gives it a nice firm. It's hard to get it really, really tight. Um, and I try to do the sawdust. Well, let me back up. This still has the cardboard in it. So I do a cardboard piece. I do the freezer paper, two freezer papers, one to make a template for the bottom and one to take make a template for the top. I don't leave the freezer paper in, though. But on the cardboard, then, I also put on the inside of it a... Um, drapery weight so it has enough weight it's not going to fall over you know it, it sits nice oops <laughs> there we go so it was a fun stitch and like i said i finished the stitching a while while ago it has a few beads but i just needed to finish the drum the next thing, I'm now some of these I've finished sort of. This is something that I I stitched this. Well, I'll tell you when I stitched it. I stitched it in 2018. <laughs> this is a little needle book by Threadwork Primitives. Little Stitcher's Wallet. And the stitching was really easy. And I've got it all finished, except I haven't buttonhole or blanket stitched the wool pieces in. So I still need to do that. So it just makes an, like an oblong or whatever you call that shape, oval. And it was all complete. It was a kit. And then the back has the ear. Well, that's fun. Let me see if I can make room for all this stuff. I think you close it with a little button closure. And then <clears throat> this one I did a while ago, too. This is by um, Primitive Hair Needlewoman. Busy as a bee. And I love this design. I think that's beautiful. I never really got into the bee thing. But I think they're cute. I mean, people that are into it. This one I'm not quite finished with. The instructions have you finish this. And I need to f do the final stitching here because that's where I turned it. So then you end up with this thing that goes like this. No, I lied. It goes like this. But it's still just open, and then you you stitch the sides so you have a little pocket. But I think it would look really cute, and the fabric is bees, if you can see that. I think it would look cute just over the arm of the sofa. And if I do that, then I may have to do my pocket going this way so I could put scissors or needles or something like that in the pocket. So I may do that instead of the other way. Because she doesn't really have a picture of how it's finished. I mean, you can kind of see it. I went on Pinterest and found a few people, but it just looks like this, where it's just folded. Now, she did use some um, um, buttons on a, you know, like, like a string of buttons that she used for the closure. 
but that didn't come with the kit. So if it did, I lost it. <laughs> the next thing I finished, and I love this. This is, this I, I'll talk to you in a minute about our classes at the summer school, but this was kind of one of those things I was like, hmm, this is going to take a while and it's a little confusing. And so I kind of put off finishing it. But once I got started, it went really fast. Let me show you the pattern. This is by La Dida. Oops. It's a little needle needle book kit. I think this came out at market this year, but it could have come out the year before. You see it? I know there's a lot of glare. And this is the one, if you remember when I did it, my W takes up more space than I see, and I didn't center it, which I should have, but that doesn't bother me. So here it is. Just a little needle book. And you open it up and you have, and of course I had, I put button straight pins. I mean, my hand. <laughs> I got this at the attic. The Lee jeans, last name is L-E-A, Lee. I put some scissors and since there's a house on the front, I put, I think that's a I'm not sure who made that needle minder. It's either Blackbird or with a nylon thread. And then you have a pocket on the other side. Two pockets. You could put a thing of needles. Isn't that cute? And then it has these brads to hold that all together in the very middle. It's done. It's cute. I like it. And then I did some stitching. You know, whenever you fly, I don't like to work on a big piece on that. Invariably. Invariably. I either like an aisle seat or, or window. Nobody likes the middle seats, obviously. And it's on, if you fly southwest, you can, you know, you check in 24 hours ahead of time, you get your letter and number so you you know b12 or whatever and then you line up and then you get to go in in that alphabetical order so you get to pick your seat you don't have a you don't have an assigned seat and invariably i'll get somebody that sits in the middle seat that takes both armrests <laughs> like do you know you're being selfish because you really are <laughs> I should at least get one, right? Everybody should get one. So anyway, on the airplane, I stitched, I worked on this. I didn't finish it on the airplane. In fact, this acorn here, I think I ripped it out three times. Not the whole thing. The first time I was putting it here, and I was like, whoops, it'll be upside down. You know, it's just amazing to me. You can do a whole sampler and not have that many mistakes, and you can do a little piece and be frogging more than you're stitching. It's, I don't understand the logic of that. So I'm going to, it's still open on the end. I'm going to fill it with sawdust, and just make a little fall pin keep. I don't know if I'll put cording or something on the edge, maybe. There's actually two colors. There's this is a darker color. And then it's repeated over here. This is a pattern, and I got these from the Old Mill Stitchery. Oops, it's upside down. And um, they're by Work Basket, and each one I don't want to show you, was a month. I think I have, like, I don't have every month. I have, like, six of them. I don't know that you need every month. But they came with the NPIs, silks and the linen. So it was a complete kit. Then I just put a little something on the back. I think it's cute. Seasonally appropriate. So anyway, I started that on the airplane and worked on it on the airplane coming back. And then I um, finished it when I got home. It took me it took me longer than I thought to finish that little thing. And then I got started piecing a, a mini quilt 
um, after I came home. This was actually a kit that I got at Country Sampler last fall. I like mini, mini quilts. There's one here. Right there. Don't ask me what pattern. It's a Carol Hopkins pattern, I think, but I don't know the name of the... She did a lot of Civil War minis. And while I'm talking about that, I get a lot of people ask me about this one. This is Harriet Elizabeth Coe by Brenda Gervais. I don't know if it's still available or not. Harriet Elizabeth Coe, C-O-E, by Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. It's very pretty. It's my wine piece. <laughs> Anybody remembers I spilled wine on it? I was afraid it wouldn't come out okay, and it did. So anyway, I made this little mini quilt. It's browns with a little kind of pinkish. But to me, it looked kind of fallish. I just, I have the binding sewn on, but I need to hand stitch it down to the back side before it's finished. But I like, I like to hang these just around or fold them up or roll them up. I have a big crock. Oops, it's not there. I have a crock over there. This direction, I have a candy thing that I got last year from Country Sampler at Christmas time. And I roll them up and put them in there. Okay, so next, I'm going to talk about, okay, so I did framed and I did finished. Now I'm going to talk about fines. So this is my haul. <laughs> so when you go to the attic, if you're a sampler lover, try to make it at least once in your lifetime to go to the attic because it is the most phenomenal store. And everybody that works there is so nice. And they just, you know, I guess because it is such a large store, they have things and designers pieces that you might, you just might not see anywhere else. And if you don't see them, you don't, you don't even know they're necessarily out there. So, and that's why it's good when different people go through and do tours from Needlework Market, because there may be designers that are new or ones that I, I had never stitched any of their pieces. And maybe they do reproductions or they do something that you really would like. And if you don't have a local needlework store, I've told you before, there is a shop here in Jacksonville. She doesn't go to market. She really specializes in needlepoint and knitting. And she does have a good selection of floss if I need something in a hurry. But I just don't, you know. One time I asked if she had any 40 count. She said, oh, nobody stitches on 40 count. <laughs> and actually, they do. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try to get these things out in sort of an order because I have a big basket of stuff. So first I'm going to talk about summer school. Summer school was Friday afternoon, Saturday day, and Sunday. I had to leave early. There was only one flight out of, Je out of Arizona, uh, Phoenix that went to Jacksonville. It wasn't direct, but so I had to leave. My flight was at like 11 something and there were there was a class Saturday or Sunday morning that I missed. But the teacher um, five times blessed is her name on Instagram and she gave me all of my supplies. I just don't know how to make it because <laughs> we did a lot of like crafting type projects. So I'm going to try to show these in somewhat order and with the designer that they went with. Some of these people I had never met before, so forgive me if I don't remember their names. But anyway, I'll learn them as I go. This was what was sitting at our table. So I don't know. There's a lot of people that have shown pictures from, you know, Nicola Parkman from Hands Across the Sea. She, she went to the second session. She wasn't at our session. but um, So this was our box we got. 
and it has stuff in it that's sliding around, but it's, you know, it's slotted. It's just a wonderful, wonderful carry, carry on or carry all box for stitching stuff. So let me see, let me start first. Put this closer to me. <laughs> okay, you ready? So each designer had a project, and if it was like part of the sampler that was made into a project, then we also well we all we also got the sampler um, pattern chart, not necessarily the threads and linen. Does that make sense? Okay. So this was Linda from Needle Made Designs. So this was the reproduction chart she gave us. And if you see, there's a squirrel right here. And this one says, religion should our hearts engage while in our youthful bloom. It will fit us for declining age and for the silent tomb. Love this. Has a red house. I think I want to kit this up because I really like it. And I'd like to do that. I love that border. It's gorgeous. So her project was, and we got all the supplies to make this little scissor key purse. And we even got a little box to keep our purse in. And on the back, now I haven't stitched any of this because we didn't we didn't do as much stitching. Some of it we did more crafting. So we got the supplies, you know, the handle for the purse. And this is, um, what is this called? It's silk, but there's a name for it. I'm a textiles major. I should remember, and I don't. Anyway, and this has been stenciled with an acorn. And then the chart, so here's the linen that the you can stitch the squirrel on. I don't know that I'm going to stitch a squirrel. Now there's been a couple people that have already finished it. We had an episode one time with a squirrel that got in the house. My son and my husband swore to me that they were pretty sure <laughs> that it went out the front door. Pretty sure. And so then I got up at three in the morning to get a glass of water and it ran across my foot. That was my one real genuine panic attack. I was freaking out. It did finally get persuaded to go out of the house. I'm not a huge fan of squirrels. <laughs> Chipmunks are cute. Squirrels, not so much. So I think I might take one of the motifs from that little piece that I showed you that I did by Work Basket, the little one that has the acorns. And I think I might take a motif of that and put it on the front of the purse. That way it's still acorns and it still goes with the back. And just thought that would be a good idea. And then we took washi tape and we covered these little boxes. And I decided right then and there that I was going to redo mine when I got home because I was trying to change the colors and it started peeling off. But ideally, you put this washi tape stuff on, you stick it on, and then you um, mix just white glue with water and then cover that and it'll stick down all your edges. But that was cute. Cute idea. So that was one thing. Let's see. Who's next? Um, this was Gloria from The Lady's Needle. And I fell in love with some Milady's Needle patterns. I had never seen her patterns, um, even to know about them. So there were, 
I got a few of her patterns when I was there because when you see them and they're made up, it's just, oh, that's gorgeous. And this one, I want to make sure I'm telling this right. Yeah. So this is just the chart that we got. Okay. From Gloria. And then see everything was just like packaged so nice. You just didn't even want to open it because it's like, oh, this is so cool. Now I'm hope yeah, this is correct. So this then We got all the stuff to make this book. Attic Summer School. This is the inside of the front inside and the back inside. And you can put initials of a friend, whatever you want to put on there. And we got all the stuff to make the cross stitch on the front of the book. So that's what we'll stitch. Got the linen, everything. And then there's a lot of little accoutrements we got. They call it ephemera. Stuff we can stick in our book, you know, cut them out, stick in our book. Little sewing doodads. And then in class, we made the book. So the book's made, now we're just ready to do the stitching and attach it to it. So one of the things will go here. There were three charts and then one here and then one on the front. And then the middle pages, we went ahead and made those and we were able to put the faculty and get their signatures and then the graduating class and get signatures of all your friends. Great idea. Loved it. Very creative. Very, very, very fun. Next up, there were five teachers all together. And this was Scarlet House, Tanya. And it's C.C. C. C. Smith. Smith, yeah. A Dutch sampler, which is just gorgeous. And then this so here's our threads. I did start stitching on this one. That's done on Picture This Plus. And then, you can't really see it very well in the picture, but we got red wool with fabric on the back. And then we can mount our, cro our cross-stitched sampler on top of the red wool and then scallop the edges of the wool. So it's kind of like a little mat. Well, definitely like a little mat. <laughs> So that was fun. Hope I'm not making too much noise. You can see a little bit of, well, no, you can't, around here of the wool. But we got all the instructions to do that. And then the next one is Linda Danielson from Samplers Remembered. And this one, we got the sampler. And then on the sampler, whoops, over here, the actual sampler had a ring tied on with a ribbon. So she showed us how to make cute little bows, tiny, tiny bows. And we got a ring to put on it. I actually, I have a brother that passed away when he was 38. And I have a ring 
that's his baby ring. I, I'm pretty sure it's his baby ring. It's not mine. It's not my. And if my sister says it's hers, I'm going to dispute that <laughs> because this is, I'm pretty sure this is her brother's. So anyway, I'm thinking about putting it on this sampler. Then with that, we got, let me see if I can find it. This, which is a cutout, like paper dolls, and it's four little girls sitting around a table. Or two little girls, I guess. It's just back to back. No, four. There's four. Is that not cute? So I'm afraid to cut it, though, because it's just like, I don't want to make a mistake. I actually used to play with paper dolls. I thought they were fun. Nowadays, kids would be like, this is just paper. <laughs> then our next project was from Needlework Press. And we got this beautiful chart. We all were cracking up about this verse. Our best friends are those who tell us of our faults and teach us how to crack them. <laughs> I don't know if that'd be a friend or not. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> anyway, if, you know, we would say, you're doing that wrong, and I need to teach you how to correct that because I'm your friend. <laughs> anyway, um, and it's in a booklet form, and part of the reason is because she did it really large. See, my nose is itching again. Always happens. She did it really large so that the over one is not like a, just a little separate graph, but it's actually part of the, the regular chart, which I thought was genius. So this is Needlework Press. Vicki, Jeanette. And then her project, we got all kinds of goodies. Oops, I'm showing the chart. And this is to make a pin drum. And it has elements and motifs from the big chart. And then we also got a little box. And we stained, not stained, but we oiled it. And then some people painted theirs. And then this is just a piece of paper, heavy paper that's copied that you can glue in here. And it makes a little sewing box. Isn't that cute? Blackbird does this a lot, where they'll take pictures, good color copies of their stitch pieces or of antiques, and then they use them for different things. They even frame theirs. I think that's really cool. So we have all the stuff for that. And then the last one was, um, um, oh, I can't remember her name. Five times blessed. Anyway, she had a paper crafting project, not a chart. Um, I don't think. I missed that class, but I don't think. So then I thought I'd show you a little bit of <laughs> my time at the attic. First of all, they had, this was the box that you made, they made on Sunday. And you wrap it and you put jute and I just don't know how to finish it. But I will, I'll find out. Um, they had quite a bit of the week's linen that was the Zweigart base. So this is 40 count tin roof. This is, those are not, those are lakeside. Anyway, some of them I've already put them with different projects. But the main ones I got were the um, straw, some 36. Oh, no, this is cappuccino. But I also got some straw. 
And as per what I told you, I got a piece of 56 count. Jean was just stitching away on her 56 count. I did a couple of X's. You see them? And when I say it's from the Zweigart base, it has that red line on the selvage or orange, but so it's dyed with a different kind of base than we used to use. But this is a great color. I thought it'd be kind of fun to try it. I actually could see it. Now I did have to use a magnifier. I normally just use um, 3.5 or 4.0 readers. And then the other piece I got was the straw. Some were 36 that I got, some were 40. Obviously one's 56. So that was kind of fun. Okay. This one is Linda Guillory by GGR. Oh, these are just charts that I got. Love the guy on the horse. That's really cool. says, if I am right, that grace impart, still in the right to stay. If I am wrong, oh, teach my heart to find the better way. Done, to, done by Lydia Guillory. I love that. Um, I'll keep going, but later I want to share something else. I'll remember. This was an Adam and Eve by the Scarlet House that I've never seen. And true to the attic, they have all of the Scarlet House. Most all, well, all of these designers that were, um, and these teachers were from around the Arizona air, area. And Jean very openly says that's how she's able to do summer school the way it's done, because so many of them live in that area. So, Adam and Eve, Scarlet House. I don't know when this came out. It's not a new pattern, I know that. 2012. These are some of the Milady's Needle ones that I got. Let's see here. I didn't kit these or anything. I love that. The earth is a feast for the eyes that waits for us to be seated. I love that. This they had, and this pat, this picture does not do this one justice. They had this one, and it's big. Um, 16 and a half by 18 and 3 fourths. 298, let's just call it 300 by 339. But it's much softer. It's really, really pretty. They had that one, a finished model. I just loved it. Loved it. And it has a familiar verse, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. One of God's blessings. Um, this was another Milady's Needle, Ann Smith Blockley. That was really pretty. You know, some of these the pictures just don't do them justice, but when you see the actual piece. This one, I absolutely was gaga over. And if I just saw the chart, I would have been like, yeah, okay, that's nice. But stitched, it was so pretty. So I got a piece of uh, 40, I, I came home and got some fabric. I think it's this 40 count exemplar. And then when I was there, because it calls for the, um, 
103 silks. The, the only thing about be challenging, I thought, you know, maybe I need to just put a, like a ribbon or something all the way through the ends. <laughs> Make it into a necklace. So when you're stitching, you just pull it around, pull out the one you want. Anyway, these are by Access Commodities, and they're um, silk, and you just pull one strand right off of the spool. And they're really kind of affordable. So those that's what this pattern called for, so I went ahead. I mean, there's nowhere around here that I would be able to get those. I didn't want to have to order them. And then let me see what else here is in this giant basket. This is the new um, Scarlet House Elizabeth Hunter. Beautiful. Loved it, loved it. Saw it made up. Gorgeous. And they had um, it actually calls for weeks and classic color works, but they had done a silk conversion at the attic. I'm missing a couple threads, but isn't that beautiful? Very pretty. Some of them are dinky dyes, some are gum nut. And some are Belsois, and some are, I think there's a Gloriana in here too. Very pretty. And then they always give you a chart when they do a conversion. So if you're interested in a conversion, I'm sure they will do it for you too. Um, while we're on the Scarlet House, I got this one, which is a new, I think this is fairly new. Sorry, Tanya. 2018. But I had never seen it. It's got the Quaker elements. It's really pretty. Start putting things back in this basket or I'm going to have a mess. Okay. Um, let's see. Did I get any other Scarlet House? I got this one, but they they had a sale on this a while back, and they that was waiting for me, so it wasn't anything brand new. Um, I got this one, Prudence Pairing. I love that. It was one they had kitted. I didn't get the silks for it though. I just love longer samplers like this. So it's 111 by 227 or 5 by 12. I love that. And that is by Samplers Remembered. This is a cute way. I didn't even read it, but till now, this is a cute way of asking you not to copy. It says, please copy with needle and thread only. That's cool. I like that. Um, sometimes other stuff gets in like this. This one is by Needlework Press. And I've seen it before. But, um, okay, so I had the phenomenal opportunity to visit Tanya's house, the Scarlet House. And um, when people were doing the common thread um, themes on Instagram, and she, if you'll go to the Scarlet House on Instagram, you will see some pictures of her walls. Her office is covered with antique samplers, some of which she has reproduced, some of which she's going to reproduce, I believe. And then in her um, great room, she has all of this more, you know, 
samplers that she has done. And this was one that she had done. I think she did it on like 40 or 46 count. It was hanging on the wall, and I was like, oh, that is fabulous. I'm telling you, when you see things stitched up, it is like a total difference versus just seeing the chart. When you see it in person, nothing like it. Now, there's a lot of charts we buy that are cute because they're cute and they're going to be fine. And But I think samplers, being able to actually see what they look like stitched up is... They're, I, it's just wonderful. That's why shops have models because of that. So there's another one that I saw on her wall that she had stitched that I'll show you in my kitted up stuff. So I'm still in fines. I did framed, finished, and fines. And then there was this one, which we, this is another reason I didn't do my video right away. We were asked not to share on social media any of the projects from class until the second session was over and any of the new Hands Across the Sea until they were released. Now, I didn't get the other one. The other one is a little bit more, well, it's very feminine. This one, oh, I just think that's gorgeous. The Red House. So this is one of the new Hands Across the Sea releases. Sally Stansfield, 1841. Love it. And of course, her charts are beyond compare. Just gorgeous. Let me clean up a little bit. And they had the 100, it's 100 slash 3. So that's the, um, I guess that's the size of it. I don't know. 100 weight, 3 denier, I don't know. 50 meters. So they had these all kitted. So there's your colors that that red house is going to be. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it. And then Tanya also had her new um, pieces out. Hello Fall. These were all on display. Crow's Corner. These are so cute. This is a little... This doesn't have a name. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it does. Coverlet Berry Scissor Tray. I couldn't see it right there. Kind of cute. Um, this is Coverlet Birds. That's an older chart of hers, but they had it made up, and I was like, I've never seen that. That's really cute. This one, I think she released at market. She had a few that had dogs on it. She loves her dogs. It's so cute. Charlotte Murdoch, and then this one, Autumn Alphabet. I love that. This is the one I want to do first. And then while I was there, I'm just about done, so don't panic. Remember, I quilt for this. This is my quilting business. Right into charts and linen floss. Um, while I was there, I got the new Brenda Gervais. I didn't get all of them, but I got this one. I thought it was really cute. That little pumpkin head girl. And then this one. A lot of people were working on this one. And I had this brilliant idea. I have some of these old spools. And I think if I did the math, it's 36 high. So 18 count would be two inches. I could probably do like a, maybe a or I could just, you know, make it have an extra row stitching along the edges. But I thought it would be fun to wrap it on this after it's stitched and then tie it. Just to sit around <laughs> and look cute. Don't you think that's a good idea? I think it's a good idea. I have to live to be 150. At least. 
Okay, now we've done framed, we've done finished, we've, or finishes, and we've, hold on, let me move this desk. <sighs> Take a little break. By the way, is anybody curious what this is? Let me share with you one thing that's not stitching. So everybody should be drinking, should drink a lot of water, right? It's just good for you, drink a lot of water. Well, sometimes you want something that just has a little bit of taste. So I buy this, which is the Diet 5. Comes in all different flavors, cran, pomegranate, cran apple. It's basically one gram of sugar. It's basically zero points with Weight Watcher. And I'll put about two-thirds water and one-third of the Diet Cranberry. Gives a little flavor. It's really good. Just try it. I'm calling this, since I'm on an F framed finished finds, I'm calling this one Friends, which is also known as Whips. So let me just show you what I've done. I'll show you a few things that I've put a few stitches in. The first one is Maria Selby Humphrey. 1831. There's a couple of people that have just finished this. Tracy um, from Hands to Work. She just finished it. It's gorgeous. I'm using the called for cottons. Blues, browns, tans. I'm pretty sure this is sand dune. Vintage sand dune. And I just have a little bit done. Red deer, I keep going away and coming back. Oh, that was by Blackbird. Red deer. This is another one that has a lot of color changes. This is when you have to use your sampler vision when you look at the pattern. Because that's the antique. And the antique might be in really crummy shape. I've started on the deer. Got the pot of flowers on the other side done. And now I'm headed up to finish the deer and down to do this big, big, big flower down here. I still have quite a bit to do on this because all these flowers around the edge have to be done. Plus, they have um, they have co like two colors inside of them. One for the very center of the flower and then one for the little things on the outside of that. So, um, I don't know if I don't know if I've ever shown this or not. This is one that I'm doing on 46 count, and I got this back out because when you're at the attic and everybody's doing everything on 40, 46, 52, 56, you're, you're like, you feel like, okay, I'm in kindergarten and I'm still stitching on 36, which even 36 for a lot of people is pretty high count. I'm very comfortable with 36 or 40, no problem. But I started this one. These is has the Tudor silks. Some blue. Very pretty. And this is Ellen Strick by the Scarlet House. This is another it's it that was one of the most it was almost like a spiritual moment. <laughs> when you actually are looking at the actual antique that the little girl stitched, and then you've also stitched it. Like, um, there's quite a few that I've done that are Scarlet House. And you're looking at, like Rachel Howell, the one that has all the big red flowers around it. And you're looking at the actual one that the girl stitched. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, 
She stitched this when she was eight years old in the 1800s. I'm looking at this actual piece, and I've stitched it. And this little girl probably, well, obviously, she had no idea that her piece would be in somebody's house framed, and they would rechart it for those sampler lovers that we are to stitch it. I, I just think that's just, like, unbelievable. Anyway, I still have more to show you, so i got to keep going. And so this is Ellen Strick, and this one is done on, oh, I'm thinking this might be Sand Dune also. And this is the 46 count. Now, there's a lot of words on this, and I will not do a full cross on the over one. But I really don't have a problem on the 46. Now I have to wear my readers. I'm kind of good with it. And a lot of people kept saying, well, if you can do 40, you can do 46. So, okay, take you up on it. The next two are ones that I've really been concentrating on, and I did post both of these on Instagram. I don't always do that because I think, well, I'll show it on my video first, and then I'll, but since it's sam Sampler September, which if you don't watch Kitten Stitcher, you should, whether you like samplers or not, she's just fun to watch, and she has a wonderful shop, and she can get you almost anything you want within reason. <laughs> but this is Charlotte Clayton. One of the gals in our stitching group stitched this a while back, and she actually stitched it on a color called gingerbread, so it really came out almost like the picture. It's just gorgeous. It has these big cats, big birds, big flowers. But... At the time, she said, she showed me her pattern. She said, you have to order it from this museum. Okay. So I did. And I actually don't think I did a download. So here it is, what I've done so far. Um, and this is, this is kind of tedious stitching. Because there's a lot of colors and color changes in that. The birds were easy. And now I'm down here to this bed or whatever this cat is sitting on. And and there's quite a few color changes on the cat, too. The border's finished. So it's just a matter of getting it done. I really agree with Teresa Kitten Stitcher when she said that she doesn't necessarily like I like the idea of starting samplers but when it actually you put in the first stitch in it's kind of like meeting a new friend that you know you're going to like because you have a lot of stuff in common but yet there's just a little bit of awkwardness <laughs> I'm personifying my sampler <laughs> well it's the same way with the sampler it's like okay I know I'm going to love doing this but those first few stitches and you know you have this huge task or you know it's all before you versus when you're like in the middle of it and you have a lot done and it's like you're bonding with the girl <laughs> it's crazy <sighs> people that don't stitch samplers they must think we're nuts oh anyway this is mary cook this is another one that i think you kind of have to have vision and I, I don't blame the designers. I think pictures are really hard to show. But when I originally saw this, all the reds to me looked very dark burgundy or kind of wine colored. And this I'm doing on 36 count. I'm not sure if it's vintage or not, but it's pecan butter. Look how gorgeous that is. That is gorgeous. Oops, the light is shining through from my lamp. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm working on filling in this tree right there. And I'm using the called for, which are yeah, Bell Swan, and then there's one NPI. Oh, and Gloriana. 
Okay, so when the Gloriana is schoolhouse red, regardless of what the picture looks like, if it's schoolhouse red and it's Gloriana, it's going to be beautiful. Because look at that. That is like, I mean, can you wrap me in that to bury me? Because I think I need to. That is just gorgeous. Just who I am. <laughs> anyway, I just, I'm really enjoying this very much so. I have a lot of leaves to do on the tree. And then once I do the leaves on the tree and finish filling in these trees, then the bottom half or bottom third, whatever, will be finished. And even though this has a lot of words, they're not over one. So they'll go fast. I love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, and Charlotte Clayton, the one from the museum that I showed you, that's all done in NPIs. I was missing a few colors. I thought I had the whole thing, so I had to wait for a few colors. That was one of the reasons I set it aside. Not that there wasn't other I could do. And then I also, what did I do with it? No, it was here. I know it was. Anyway, I started the Blackbird piece, Kindred Spirit, which spirits, I think it is. It's a drum. That's goofy. I had it right here. It'll probably turn up in a minute, and I'll be like, oh, here it is. I don't even have the picture. Oh, here it is. Told you I did that. <laughs> Sometimes when I go to um, a group of friends that meet on Thursdays at the quilt shop, a lot of people quilt, a lot of people people do all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I don't always like to take a big sampler because sometimes if you're talking, it's unless I'm filling in a house or something, I can make mistakes when I socially <laughs> stitch. Anyway, so I picked this up, and I thought, well, I'm going to do this. But I've just barely started. And it's done on Picture This Plus. I think this is Oaken. It was a kit from Dying to Stitch. Just has a few colors. So those are my whips that I'm kind of been working on. And then the last thing I'm going to call forward, <laughs> but framed, finished, finds, friends, which are my current whips because those girls become my friends while I'm stitching, and then forward. So these are the things I want to stitch. This is Harriet Salt. Everybody and their brother has seen this and from Hands Across the Sea. When I was in, I did get a piece of the week's straw in the 46 count. I think it's going to be 18 by 18, so it's still big even on 46 count. And then, of course, going with the theme, I got a hank. And this is a beautiful color. I saw on a website, Needle in a Haystack, I think it is. It's in California. You can buy a super hank like 120 190 dollars i can't remember the price i saw it on an email in case you need a super hank that's a mega hank <laughs> okay a couple more things and then i'm gonna let you go because i'm sure you're just like oh yeah yeah lady so these are ones that i have kitted that i really want to start and since it's sampler september I have not, never done the Smith Sampler. I did get to see the antique at Tanya's house. It was beyond exciting. And I just told myself I got to come home and get this out because it's so pretty. I have it kitted with silks and a, mm -hmm, kind of a medium dark linen. I'm not sure which vintage meadow rue. 
I think it is. I was so surprised when I saw this one stitched because a lot of Tanya's models, reproductions, the antiques she has at home, the stitched models that she stitches herself. She said she really likes to stitch her own pieces so that she can change colors if necessary or tweak a mistake if she finds one. But it's at the attic, so most of her stitched models are at the attic, and it's really small. It's just not that big, the Smith sampler. For some reason, all the people that have done it, I just had in my mind that it was a big sampler. So Anyway, and then I got this one out today because this is one I've always wanted to stitch. This is the Mary Barr sampler. I don't have it. Um, I, I have the threads for it, but they're not on a ring. So um, they're just loose. And that I'm going to stitch on light exemplar, I think. By Lakeside. Another red house. Love it. This is one. Um, I have no idea. I have no idea. I want to say this came out a year ago, market, like 2018. And it's by Samplers Not Forgotten. BG 1874. I think this is gorgeous. I don't have them on a ring, but I have it kitted with silks. And 36 count buttercream. Is that not gorgeous? Okay, I will. And these blue lines here, I think you actually pull a linen thread and then you replace the, you know, just the weave with a colored thread. That's gorgeous. Don't know who BG is, but it's a movie BG, Big Giant. That's a cute movie. Okay, so when I was at Tanya's house, on her wall of stitch things that she has stitched in her great room, there was a piece there, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. So I said, what, what is this? And she said, oh, that's um, Adam and Eve by the City Stitcher. She said, I don't know if you can get that anymore. Don't tell me that. I don't want to hear those words. So... I was looking and looking, and there, I did later find a place that you. I think you can still order it from the City Stitcher. You have to put in citystitcher.com. And I think other patterns come up, like quilting patterns, too, so you have to be, just look. So when I got home, I thought, I wonder if I have that. I have quite a few City Stitcher. Well, lo and behold, I have it. Adam and Eve Sampler by the City Stitcher. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just going to kit this with DMC and call it a day. Let's see, this is pretty, I think, this way. Look at those colors. Because this is not a new pattern, obviously. I don't see a date on it. Yeah, I don't see a date on it. So that's one that going forward I really want to I want to do that. It's not huge. That's just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Two more things and then that's it. Cuz it's this is a really long one. So if you haven't watched Brendan the Serial Stitch Serial Starter, which is Laura, also known as Maud and Mozart, um, they're two of my, I call them my Chicago friends because they're from Chicago. Um, I had, we had talked back and forth over social media, but I finally got to meet him at Dying to Stitch. And, um, so we've been to a couple retreats together and they're just wonderful, wonderful women, very 
very nice, very kind, very fun, wonderful stitchers. And so we were all saying, you guys should do floss tube. And like, I don't know. I don't know. And so they said, well, I'll do it if you do it. And so they decided. So they have number one is up. So Laura just cracks me up because she has all these things. She's hepped up on this and how you, you know, you have to have a, um, um, a doodad on all your pieces, you know, because it's the law. And so I, you have to watch them, subscribe, all that good stuff because they're, they're very fun to watch and they're very geared to just talking about stitching, which is one of the things I really like when I watch a floss tube. Anyway, Laura showed this that she had stitched. And, you know, I have all these Blackbird books, which that's another one of the things they said is a law. So I got it out, and I actually have all the floss. I actually am going to change the red, though, because it called for pomegranate for the red for the house. And my pomegranates are very pink, and I want a red house. So I'll probably change it to either ruby slipper or baked apple. Not sure which. Yeah. I have two baked apples, and they're a little bit different. And this is the picture. And I'm going to do that on 36 Count Old Town Blend by r, r I think that's what Laura said she did hers on. Well, I got a copy. One more thing, and then I'm going to let you go. Um... The same gal in my stitching group that did Charlotte Clayton also is working on Anne Dale, 1827, Big and Beautiful. This is by Shakespeare's Peddler. I've had this pattern for a while. I think it's, it was, a friend of mine has relatives, another friend in our stitching group has relatives that live close to where the attic is. So she goes periodically to see her family. And she bought this pattern for me um, at the attic. I think it was in 2016. I've had it for a while. This is huge. Really big. So, um, yeah, it's 402 by 531. <laughs> okay. And, um, might as well make that into a big pillow because that will be too much money to frame. Anyway, Andale. It's got a lot of reds. My friend, I think she's about down to here. She's done quite a bit on it. So every time she comes to stitching group. So I thought, since Teresa is kind of sp sponsoring Sampler September, it would be appropriate for me to start Andale which is her reproduction pattern under Shakespeare's Peddler. And I have all the kitted flosses, NPI, and a few Gloriana, and a few Belsois. And there's a lot of red, a lot of red. There's four skeins of this number, 505. And then you also have Hollyberry by Gloriana, which is not as not as pink as it looks in that picture. And then I'm going to do it on a piece that is humongous. <laughs> it's bigger than a fat half, I think. And this is um, sand dune. It's not vintage, it's just sand dune, I think. But I thought it would be appropriate to start that since... Teresa is sponsoring Sampler September. I thought that would be very fun. So I hope you've endured or watched this in about 25 segments, but um, thank you for all your well wishes for um, hurricanes. 
Dorian, um, I feel so bad for the people that did get damage and some are just devastating pictures and so we pray for them and you know it's it's always hard to know you know I guess you just have to pray that it goes out to sea because you don't really want people say well I'm praying it just bypasses us and goes to the Carolinas well I'm not praying <laughs> my friends will live there so anyway you just have to um, trust that God will sustain you and I I do that so anyway it was good to see you and I don't know when I'll be back. I'm not going to make any promises because my I'm bad at keeping promises. But I just had a lot to show you and I thought it would be fun to do one today. So anyway, hope you have a good weekend and I will see you later. Love you. Bye.